Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, thank you for joining the webinar today. First, wanted to introduce ourselves. My name is Matt Peterson. I'm a relationship director with Maple LMS. I work very closely with our clients at Maple LMS to partner with them on their training, education, and professional development programs, and to help them achieve their objectives around their education programs. Joining me today is my colleague, Avon. Avon, how are you today? Would you like to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your role at Maple LMS? Yeah, thank you so much, Matt. I'm doing good. My name is Avin. I'm a customer training manager with Maple LMS, and I manage onboarding of new clients, train them on our platform, help them get started with uh, Maple LMS. And yeah, that's pretty much my role. Great. Thank you. And so nice to have you with us and uh, have your insight today. So just a couple of housekeeping items. We encourage you to ask questions through the Q&A at the bottom of your screen, and we'll be sure to answer them. Also, Maple LMS is a certified CAE provider, and today's live call is eligible to receive one CAE credit. This can be claimed on the American Society of Association Executives website. So today we'll be talking about how to measure the impact of training with a Salesforce LMS. In our webinar today, we'll be talking about using an LMS that is integrated with Salesforce. However, much of the information discussed today will hold true for a standalone LMS or integrated with another system of records. Um, and just a little bit about Salesforce. Salesforce is the most popular CRM in the world and has become an important tool for every organization that wants to be close to its customers, prospects, and members. It has developed an amazing marketplace of software called the App Exchange. That'll enable organizations to extend the functionality into every division that doesn't already use it. It is a place where you can find software to perform any number of operations. And this turns Salesforce into a single point of entry for anyone in your organization who needs to interact with customers, prospects, employees, or members, and can be useful in your training programs. Integration between the two systems is done with an application programming interface or API, a bit of code that lets the two programs communicate and share data. Once the API is installed, you need to think about which data fields in your LMS you want to push to Salesforce. And then this data will exist in both platforms and will update real time when changes are made. Typically, this will include uh, what courses the user has completed certifications earned, how they scored on assessments and the like. Every software in the Salesforce app exchange has been put through a rigorous review process to make sure it meets strict standards and best practices as an organization. And this includes learning management software that could serve as your learning software for members continuing education, customer training, or employee onboarding. You'll find Maple LMS on the App Exchange as our system can work seamlessly with your current Salesforce environment. So, when we think about measuring the impact of training, we want to think about what are the best tools you have to measure things like pre and post assessments, performance metrics, feedbacks and surveys, observations, and return on investment are many of the ways to measure the impact of training. And LMS gives you many of the tools to ensure that you're you're measuring the impact of this training. Avon, before you, we set out in measuring the impact of your training, what are some of the benefits or objectives you seek by measuring training? Right. Um, absolutely. Good question, Matt. And let me just turn over to the next slide, but I have a few objectives uh, listed. Uh, certainly, it's very important for you to have uh, the right set of objectives when we think about measuring training impacts. Uh, first and foremost, identifying the areas of improvement. Now, measuring the impact of Salesforce LMS helps organizations identify areas of improvement in their learning programs. And by analyzing the data, organizations can determine the areas where uh, the learners are struggling and uh, make necessary changes to improve these uh, training programs. Now, also another objective of uh, measuring the impact of a Salesforce LMS is to demonstrate the return of investment uh, of training programs. And uh, this basically helps organizations justify 
uh, the resources allocated to the training program and also make uh, informed uh, decisions regarding any uh, future uh, investments as well. Now, also, if we look at some of these items over here, such as uh, comparison between old training platform with a new LMS platform, now that is something which uh, which you should really consider uh, and should be one of your ob objectives. Uh, with your old training platform and with your new, new Salesforce LMS, what are some key tools that you get uh, which help you identify uh, these uh, measuring training metrics? Uh, if your old platform does not have a lot of tools, or let's just say if you do not have an existing learning platform, uh, what tools does a Salesforce LMS provides uh, that will help you uh, measure the training impact and there are uh, there are a lot of tools that comes along uh, with the Salesforce LMS so a short uh, comparison between these two uh, systems or two ecosystems will will be really helpful uh, we talked about ROI uh, where some financial saving analysis ROIs can uh, help you to see if the costs have been reduced uh, by implementing your new uh, Salesforce LMS or an existing uh, Salesforce LMS. And similarly, if having uh, the Salesforce LMS has minimized the need for additional resources, so that way your admins can focus on more important tasks as the training is automated and learners are auto-assigned courses uh, to the courses and auto-enrolled in role-based courses, get some suggested learning paths as well. So that items uh, would fall under resource saving analysis. Uh, that way it helps you to identify. Now, also, uh, it is uh, one of the most uh, important objectives, I would say, is to evaluate uh, the effectiveness of your learning improvement. So you need to have a tool or a way uh, with, your, with your existing system, or maybe with a new LMS system, with a new Salesforce LMS to evaluate the effectiveness of your learning improvements. And that can come in many ways. Um, analytics data, uh, that is all helpful to identify and evaluate if uh, the training or the learning improvement are effective. And then also one of the obje objectives should be to align your learning programs with, uh, with your business objectives. Now, um, Organizations, depending on the type of organizations, there could be a variety of business objectives where they offer trainings, uh, maybe to employees. For employees, it could be employee growth or employee education for associations or different uh, organizations. It could be member training. So uh, you need to make sure that uh, your learning programs are actually aligned with your uh, business objectives. So basically you would have learning programs which are not just focused on your users uh, knowledge development or skill development, but also something that aims to the business objectives. Um, also some objectives to consider would be uh, improving the learning engagement uh, basically you need to have a solution that provides a great uh, engagement great learner engagement tools um, and there are a variety of things around that uh, with many uh, systems out there there are different ways to engage your employees and uh, improve the learner engagement but uh, mostly with a Salesforce LMS, you should see a lot of learner engagement because there are quite a few benefits around uh, Salesforce LMS. And lastly, uh, I would say uh, promoting any continuous improvement is uh, definitely an item to consider. So uh, once you've identified uh, all your training programs, your alignments, effectiveness, and the comparisons, what you can do is find out ways to promote your improvement. So coming up with new ideas and uh, implementing those ideas to promote your, not just your learning offering, but overall engagement of your learners uh, is certainly something to consider as one of the primary objectives. On that note, I also have a few more items uh, to talk about, which is uh, challenges that you may come across in measuring uh, the training impact. Now, one of the most uh, common challenges I would say is where you do not have access to uh, the learner's track record, any uh, learning progress or data. So essentially you need to have an accessible data that you can view and uh, measure and uh, identify uh, any challenges across that. But the data itself is a challenge. Uh, with uh, with uh, with your existing systems, 
let's say if you do not have those tools to generate that kind of data or an accessible data, then that's a big problem. Um, because if you don't have data, you just have nothing to identify and track and measure. So that's one of the biggest challenges that you would come across. And that would be uh, the most common case uh, when your organization does not have uh, a learning portal, a learning management system, or any tools around that. Um, yeah. And then one of those challenges would also be lack of alignment in defined learning goals. So there are learning goals uh, for different uh, for different use cases. There are learning goal goals for employees' uh, engagement. There are learning goals for employee development knowledge development, skill development, and uh, in general training, but they should also, as we discussed earlier, should assign uh, should align with your business goals. So this is something which needs to be fixed as quick as possible. You need to align uh, your learning goals and define those learning goals appropriately, and that way deliver uh, effective trainings. Um, also, one of the challenges that you may come across is to find a way on defining your training metrics. So what metrics do you want to identify? Uh, clearly, if you have a solution that has uh, that has all these metrics already available for you, then that's that's that, that's definitely a good uh, great thing to have. Uh, but this challenge is something that we see a lot uh, where uh, most of our, uh, not our, but most of uh, the companies, organizations, uh, they do not have a defined uh, training metric or they haven't really identified what training metrics have to be considered. So that's there. And then um, also sometimes you may not have a built-in data analysis tool. Now, it doesn't really have to be a built-in data analysis tool. It can also be an external data analysis tool, something like a Power BI or uh, any other um, analysis tool or uh, data analysis tool. But having a built-in data analysis tool is great to have. Uh, so something like a dashboard and interface that gives you analysis on different metrics, maybe assessments, your evaluations, course progress, and learning progress, overall employee engagement, uh, your popular courses, and quite a few things around that. So I would say it's a must have uh, that you should have a built in uh, data analysis tool within your learning portal. And similarly, it's also one of the most common challenges that we see with a lot of organizations. And lastly, um, and most importantly, the data quality matters. So uh, many times um, your system may have data, but is that a valuable data? And that is something to consider. With most systems, you may see poor data quality. Uh, data, poor data quality would contain, let's say, duplicate records or maybe overridden uh, data. And uh, basically, any any data that doesn't make sense is essentially uh, a poor data. So these are some of the challenges, I would say, uh, that come across in measuring uh, the training impact. Now, on that note, Matt, uh, Matt I think you... Uh, also, you're one of the best person to define that. But if you can uh, walk us through a little bit about why measuring uh, training impact is so important, I think that would be uh, helpful uh, for our audience today. Sure, absolutely. So we talked about the objectives and measuring training impact. We talked about some of the challenges. But let's talk about why measuring training impact is important. Um, first is to understand the effectiveness of learning programs. Measuring the impact of Salesforce LMS helps organizations understand how well their learning programs are working. By tracking key performance indicators such as course completion rates, quiz scores, and learner engagement metrics, organizations can really gain insight into the effectiveness of their training programs. Why would you want to identify areas for improvement? Measuring the impact of Salesforce LMS can help organization identify those areas of improvement. By analyzing the data, organizations can identify specific areas where learners are struggling and adjust your training program to address these issues. Are some learners maybe dropping off of your courses or are they consistently not doing well on assessments? Those could be indicators that those items need to be uh, looked at more closely to identify areas of improvement. 
Um, demonstrating ROI, measuring the impact of Salesforce LMS can help organizations demonstrate the return on investment of their training programs by calculating the costs associated with the training program and comparing them to benefits organizations achieve by through that training, it can show the financial value of their training programs. Aligning tra training programs with business objectives, very, very important and Aiden kind of hit upon this, but um, you need to make sure that um, your goals and objectives uh, from a business standpoint are aligned with your training programs. Um, by tracking key performance indicators and trying, trying and tying them to your business objectives, as well as your overall messaging for your organization, you can ensure that your training programs are contributing to the success of your organization. Finally, enhance learning engagement. Measuring the impact of Salesforce LMS can help organizations enhance learner engagement. By analyzing learner engagement metrics, organizations can identify specific areas where learners are disengaged and adjust your training programs to make them more engaging. So all this said, then, um, how does an L uh, Salesforce LMS help? You can go to the next slide. So we hear much about compliance training, um, compliance with both the organization and the industry st standards. It helps learners comply with the regulations of the organization and the industry that they're in. And it will prevent accidental mishaps within the organization as well as protects the organization and learners. Notifications can be auto set so an individual knows that if their compliance course that they need to take annually is coming up for renewal. Learning analytics. Um, Salesforce LMS provides advanced analytics features that help track learning progress and performance. And with these features, you can track key performance indicators, uh, such as we mentioned before, quiz scores, learning engagement met metrics, and, and the like. This helps understand how well your learners are retaining the information and how effective your, your learning programs are. Uh, the assessment tools. So uh, a Salesforce LMS comes equipped with assessment tools that enable you to create quizzes and assessments for your learners. These tools can help you gauge, learn, look, gauge your learner's understanding and retention of the content covered in the training program. And you can reuse the results of these assessments to measure the impact of the training on that learners. You can um, measure effectiveness by learning progress, kind of their success scores and their rates, the time up that they spent in the LMS, or maybe even drop off rates. You can look at their course attempts. If you have someone dropping out, coming back or not, maybe coming back at all. It could be an indication that there's a problem with that course. Um, testing learners, as we mentioned, knowledge quizzes. Um, you also may be able to create pop-up quizzes within the presentation to keep them engaged and also check for learning and understanding while they're actually in the course. And update existing courses or smaller refresh courses of the original course will help learners retain knowledge. Finally, surveys on courses or collecting feedback in other ways using social tools like forums will help you gain that valuable user feedback. The feedback can provide valuable insights into how well the training program met the learner's needs and how effective it was in helping them achieve their learning goals. Um, also, you may have a performance management module that'll track the metrics in the LMS. You can identify areas of improvement and targeted training. Instructors or managers can, can provide feedback using a feedback or mentoring program within the LMS and within your organization. The LMS can also help support rewards and recognition programs to keep motivation and engagement high. And then finally, the ROI analysis. We've talked about ROI a number of times already. But what are the actual steps to uh, conduct an ROI analysis? Um, your first one is you want to determine all the costs um, in delivering your training program. Um, so that might include developing the training. It may include um, the cost for your LMS. 
Secondly, you want to understand um, and put a dollar figure to the benefits of, of the training. So is training going to lead to increased sales productivity, improved performance, or maybe just reduce employee turnover? The third step will be to collect the data. An LMS can collect data on the learner's performance and impact of the training on the organization. And you calculate the ROI by dividing the benefits by the cost of the training program. A Salesforce LMS will allow you to view, download, print, and email reports that provide the costs and benefits of a training program, as well as calculating your ROI so that you can share that with other stakeholders in your organization. Next, let's uh, turn our focus on how we can define success metrics for training. And Avon, I think you have some insights on that. Oh, yeah. So yeah, defining success metrics for training. Uh, now, success metrics for training can vary depending on the context and goals of uh, the training program. And here are uh, some common metrics that can be used to measure uh, the success of a training. Firstly, knowledge retention. And this metric measures uh, the amount of knowledge or skills that uh, trainees retain after completing the training program. It can be measured through conducting assessments or surveys, maybe post uh, quiz survey or post assessment survey. Uh, that would basically test their understanding on the material. Secondly, uh, application of skills. Now, this metric measures uh, the extent to which trainees are able to apply the skills they learned in, in the training program. Now, that could be to their job or daily life. And uh, again, this metric can be measured through observation or self-assessment. And then uh, also behavioral change, where uh, behavioral change uh, is a metric that would uh, basically measure any behavioral changes that result uh, from the training program, such as uh, improved teamwork, communication, or let's just say leadership skills. And again, it, it it's, uh, it's something that can be measured through uh, doing surveys or simply by observation. By observation, I mean, uh, looking at uh, the progress of an individual, uh, or their engagement uh, within your learning programs. And then also uh, one of the items is to uh, is about uh, time to proficiency, which is also uh, really helpful. Now, this metric measures the time it takes for trainees to become a proficient in the skills they learned uh, in a training program. And this can be, again, measured through a variety of tools, including assessments or feedbacks from supervisors or mentors, and uh, again, multiple tools available uh, to check that. There's also, uh, with some LMS systems, you might find tools such as uh, competency frameworks or learning plans that uh, help you identify the proficiency uh, of a learner, of an employee, of a member. And uh, lastly, I would say return of investment. And uh, this metric, as we know, measures the financial return on the investment um, made in the training program. And it can be calculated by comparing the cost of the training program to the financial benefits that result uh, from the improved uh, performance uh, of the trainees. So these are a few items, I would say, uh, to consider uh, while defining su success metrics uh, for training. Uh, but I also wanted to touch upon a few questions uh, to consider when you go about uh, looking for an LMS, uh, which, which can help you uh, with all of that. Now, firstly, uh, if you're looking for a new LMS or a Salesforce LMS, um, or if you have an existing system, uh, you need to know whether your LMS would support uh, synchronous learning and mobile learning as well. Uh, synchronous, uh, synchronous learning will basically help you create synchronous courses uh, or training programs uh, within your LMS. And uh, we all know why mobile learning is so important. Uh, if your content is not accessible on mobile device, then uh, that way your learner is simply relied on a web system. So every time they have to log in through a web system and uh, take that course or maybe that assessment, but if it's already available on mobile, if it's mobile compatible, then you have access to your, uh, to your learning anytime, anywhere, and preferably on any device. And that is also a key factor that uh, drives more engagement 
uh, within uh, within your training programs. And then uh, also you might want to think about course suggestions. Um, many uh, LMS systems may or may not have this functionality, but the ones that we've seen a lot, uh, particularly Salesforce LMS will have an option to provide course suggestions. Uh, course suggestions can again, if, if they can be uh, provided based on previously completed courses. So maybe if you take a course, you complete that course and based on that course completion, you get some recommendations uh, within your LMS. Well, not just the LMS, but if, if your solution can uh, recommend courses uh, within your Salesforce environment and if that's a possibility. And that seems to be a possibility with a lot of uh, Salesforce LMSs out there, uh, but definitely something to consider when looking for a Salesforce LMS. And then you need to have a way, um, and I think we discussed that earlier as well, but uh, a way or a tool to evaluate if the productivity levels of learners has increased uh, after the training. So that is also uh, something to have, basically a tool that would measure uh, the productivity of learners who completed the course and those who did not uh, complete the course. Okay. And then also you need to think about if your uh, learning system or your portal, if it offers immersive learning experiences. Now, um, immersive learning experiences uh, can have uh, many different definitions. Uh, some of that would be offering immersive content or having tools that allow you to create uh, these engaging courses, uh, uh, basically gamified uh, learning experience or interactive uh, learning experiences. Also part of that would be multi-tenancy platform. Uh, so that is also something to uh, consider. And then how long uh, does it, uh, or basically how long does your learner engage or how does your learners engage uh, into the platform? Is there a way that uh, your solution helps drive more engagement from your learners? And that would depend on the tools uh, that, uh, that a learning system would offer. And some of that would be, again, gamified learning experiences, gamification items, creating badges, certificates, uh, a leaderboard that way. Uh, maybe some social activities such as a social forum, a discussion forum, and then also uh, two items that I would say that are highly important to consider while looking for a Salesforce LMS is whether it offers you a 24 by 7 support, uh, which is really important for a lot of organizations because LMS says, uh, LMSs are um they're not new, but uh, sometimes uh, it, it is a new application, a new system for most organizations and every LMS can be different. So there has to be support and there has to be trainings uh, uh, trainings as well. So if your LMS vendor uh, provides you support as well as unlimited trainings, not just during the implementation, but also after the implementation, that would be a great uh, thing to have. So these are a few items I would say to consider before looking out for um, a Salesforce LMS. And then I just wanted to dive in quickly into a short demo and just walk you through an example of uh, what, an, what a Salesforce LMS can do to you, how it can uh, deliver these metrics to your Salesforce environment. So I'm gonna switch my screen and go to this dashboard over here. So here, here I am logged in in my Salesforce and there's a dedicated LMS dashboard. Now this dashboard uh, shows me a variety of analytics. These could be survey reports, uh, course enrollments, your course progress reports, assessment performance reports, and basically helps you identify these uh, these metrics uh, right within your Salesforce environment. Now on top of that, if you monetize on your courses and your content, you can definitely track your revenues as well by monthly or yearly. If not, uh, then I think some of the most essential items to have would be a survey report, an enrollment report, progress report, as well as assessment reports as well. And again, um, it's a customizable dashboard. So any metrics that you want uh, or any analytics that you want on this dashboard can be created as well. Um, the data comes from the LMS to your Salesforce and then that data helps you create these metrics, these reports uh, within your Salesforce ecosystem.
So I think that's uh, a short uh, example of uh, what those metrics would look like uh, within your Salesforce ecosystem. I'm gonna switch back to my slide and actually uh, hand it over to you now. Yeah, thanks, Avon. Um, I think everyone uh, finds that helpful in, in how you can view those metrics very easily in your Salesforce, but also that data would exist in LMS. Um, we've been talking a lot about uh, the integration between an LMS and Salesforce and looking at our questions, um, Robert has a great question, uh, actually a couple questions um, around that integration. So um, the first question was, um, which Salesforce clouds are integrated with the LMS? Yeah, now that depends on use cases to use cases. Typically LMS would integrate with pretty much all of your clouds. Experience cloud being one of the most uh, common examples. So I would say experience cloud, service cloud, sales cloud, uh, marketing cloud, and pretty much any of those can be uh, integrated with the LMS and yeah. Okay. And then uh, the other follow-up question from Robert is who maintains the Salesforce LMS that right. relates to upgrades and integration? Right, absolutely. Now, uh, let's say if you sign up with an LMS vendor who offers uh, the LMS, uh, Salesforce LMS and the integration, then uh, this integration, the upgrades are fully managed by uh, the LMS vendor themselves, unless you have a third party organization who takes care of your integrations or a consulting company or that. But generally uh, with LMS providers, if they are integrating with your system, then they take the responsibility to manage any upgrades and integrations. Yeah, I think in our case in uh, Maple LMS, we, we handle all that. We handle the upgrades and yes. the integrations. Our team are experts at that integration and understand all the points and, and how any upgrades or changes may impact that integration and to make sure that it's currently up to date. So great. Okay, I think that was it for what I see as questions. Um, okay, so that'll conclude our webinar for today. We appreciate you attending and your interest in the topic of how to measure the impact of training with the Salesforce LMS. I hope the information presented today was helpful and we will support your training investments and the returns you get on those trainings. The webinar will be posted on our website for future on-demand viewing within a couple of days. And if you'd like to ask any additional questions or continue this conversation from today, feel free to reach out to us. We'd be happy to hear from you. Uh, there's contact information listed below. We appreciate you joining our webinar today. Mm -hmm and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you.